Hello, everyone. Welcome to Reiki Radio. I am your host, Yolanda. Happy Monday. Um, I just wanted to let you know, I mean, today's July 29th when this airs and the Lionsgate portal has opened and the peak of the portal is August 8th. And we hear about this every year. It's an annual event. But if you want to learn more about this energy and how we can best utilize these energies, be sure to sign up for my newsletter at theenergeticalchemist.com. The August newsletter will be going out in just a few days. So um, wanted to make sure to remind you of that. Also want to thank everyone who has joined me in Oracle School, already having a lot of fun with that. And if you ever want to join me for upcoming online classes and events, Go to my website, theenergeticalchemist.com, and choose your course, and I will see you in class very soon. All right, so the part that I love so much are the conversations that we get to have with everyone here on the podcast, and I want to thank all of you who have been here for a while. Um, those of you who are new to the podcast, welcome, welcome, welcome to the community uh, don't forget, you can leave a five-star review on any platform that you listen on. It really supports the show and helps other practitioners um, find Reiki Radio, and I really appreciate it. So I love so much that we do get to learn through each other's stories. Um, the exchanges are incredible to me, and today is no different. We are going to talk to a wonderful practitioner named Malaya Roper, who I have had the opportunity to get to know pretty well over the years. Uh, she actually graduated um, the alchemy of the Oracle class that I taught when the Energetic Alchemist Oracle deck first launched. It was a five-month wellness coaching course using Oracle. And one of the things about Malaya I've loved watching of her journey is just how she has developed her business and how she is so dedicated to supporting people in so many ways. So we all know that Reiki is an incredible system and practice. And for a lot of us, it really does illuminate and support the desire to hold loving space for other people. But with this, Many practitioners, as I'm sure you know, do decide to create a professional practice, but it can be challenging figuring out how to do it, how to make it a sustainable business. Um, for a lot of people, there's even the question of which services do I offer? Because a lot of healers or space holders um, have so many different gifts and ta talents that they want to share. So I believe you will really enjoy this conversation, learn a lot from Malaya's journey. She is the founder of Peaceful Pause Healing, and she is a licensed massage therapist, a Reiki master, a sound healer. She also teaches yoga and meditation, and she's really passionate about renewing the way people feel about their well-being. So you'll hear all about her journey, as well as this beautiful business and practice that she has created to support so many on their path. Malaya is also an intuitive healer who provides personalized support for each of her clients as they embark on their wellness journeys. So if you want to learn more about Malaya and her work, you can visit her website, PeacefulPauseHealing.com, or you can also follow her on Instagram at PeacefulPauseHealing. And the links to connect with Malaya are beneath this conversation, of course, down in the show description. And don't forget, if you want to learn more about me and my work, you want to work with me, connect with me, even join me for Reiki chats on Tuesdays, which are absolutely free. Be sure to download the Energetic Alchemist app. Um, you can get that in the Apple App Store. You can get it on Google Play for Androids. And if you want to register for classes, sign up at theenergeticalchemist.com. All right, beauties, I hope you enjoy this conversation and I will see you on the other side. Hello, everyone. We are here today with the beautiful Malaya Roper and I am so excited to talk to you first. I just want to say for everyone, stay tuned. We have an incredible conversation about 
ancestors and ancestral healing that you will get to watch with um, Malia and I on the summit. I want to say it's in the fall, this fall. So stay tuned for that. But thank you, babe, for coming to have this conversation with us today here on Reiki Radio. So excited. I've been listening to you for a couple of years now. So this this excites me. Yeah, well, it excites me too. <laughs> Watching you, and we're just saying right before this, like you are definitely one of those people, once you set your mind to it, it's like I spoke to her and she said this was a thought. And then the next thing I know, it's already emotion you're doing it it's created and that's inspiring so that's part of what I wanted to talk to you about today um how you really have embraced your role as a you know teacher practitioner a uh, curator of all kinds of events but could you tell everyone first how you got started in this path how did you get connected to Reiki and all of the other work that you do Oh my gosh. So, um, so I actually started out, in, so I went to school and studied journalism. That was my major. I thought I was going to be like a news reporter, this little anchor. I just love that. Um, just all of the things that went along with writing. And then I ended up having children and decided to go into education. And so I was in that field for about 16 years. But while I was an educator in the public school system, I, um, one of my friends had taken a yoga class and she was like, hey, you should take this yoga teacher training. And I said, okay, I will teach it to children. Well, by the end of the training, um, the woman who was facilitating the training, she said, I think you can teach more than children. And I was like, oh, wow. okay. So then I started teaching at local yoga studios and then COVID happened. <laughs> and so I really wasn't into like teaching online. So my yoga teaching had stopped. And then there was a studio that's local where I live started going there. And the owner was like, Hey, you want to start back teaching classes? Well, I didn't know that she was Reiki, that she had, she was a Reiki teacher. And um, I had seen a flyer she had about Reiki training. And I just kept looking at it. I passed it. I'm like, I don't even know what that is. And so she actually, in a conversation was like, you should do my, come to my Reiki training. I was like, I don't even know how to pronounce that. I don't know what you're talking about. And I was like, okay, sure. I trusted her. I yeah. knew something about her. We really connected. And so I come to the Reiki training and oh my gosh, it blew my mind. I I know that I didn't, I wasn't bawling crying, but there were tears for me yeah. because as a child, people would often say like, you're psychic or you have these, this ability, like the sixth sense. And Reiki helped me to see what that was. Mm. And it helped me to connect with this other part of myself that was, um, I don't know, suppressed. Yeah. And so when I went through level one and two, I was like, oh my gosh, this, I, I, I love yoga. I still love yoga. But then I was like, oh man, I love Reiki. And <laughs> But I wanted to know more about it. So I ended up listening to your, I, I was like, I went on Apple Music and looked up Reiki. And then I saw your podcast. And I remember I was driving somewhere, somewhere to the coast or something. And I just kept listening to your interviews because I just wanted to know more. And I just kept searching out everything about Reiki. And then pretty soon it turned into taking clients and mm -hmm. gone from there. Well, it's incredible to watch. Now that you say, I'm like, really? I feel like we've known each other much longer than this, no. but I guess, that's, <laughs> I guess that's right. But one of the beautiful things about what you said, especially with the yoga class, it reminds me how oftentimes people see in us what we don't yet see in ourselves and how the universe will bring people, situations, things into our lives to illuminate for us what we may not be noticing or seeing within ourselves, right? So how fortunate you were to have someone tell you, like, yeah. no, you're you're able to do much more than you may be limiting yourself to. Yes. But I also love what you bring up about what Reiki illuminated for you. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk to you about this a little bit because that is something that you hear commonly. And it goes one of two ways. Like sometimes people have, um, they connect to Reiki after their two months after practicing and certain things start to come online for them, or they start to recognize things they didn't before. Some people 
this activates curiosity and they go down the rabbit hole. Other people, it puts them into fear and they're like, what the hell's happening to me? Right. Yeah. So what was your experience with that? And what were some of the things that started to sharpen for you? Oh my gosh. It like, I, I literally feel like I was a different person before that Reiki training yeah. because afterwards there was this curiosity. Like I was like, I want to know more. What is this? What is this stuff that's coming up? And I just kept going with it. I never felt like, oh, um, to be fearful of it. It did mm -hmm. awaken um, a, a lot of my Reiki treatments. I will receive messages from people's loved ones that have transitioned. And then I've gotten into like the, the ancestral healing and then sound healing and yeah. all of this stuff. And it just kept, I just kept getting messages and messages. And then I went through, you know, your Oracle training, connecting with the, the Oracle deck and it just unle unleashed this yeah. beautiful, um, just this path that I know that I was, I'm supposed to be on, but it really illuminated it. Cause I, I really feel like at that time I, I knew that, okay, I want to be an entrepreneur, but I also love this active healing. I know that that's why I was in um, education and working with children and teaching, but it was like a different kind of healing. It was like a soul healing, getting to the, the heart of people yeah. and, yeah, it, it just, and I, I, I love it. I still now, even, even talking about it, I'm like, oh, Reiki has just, <laughs> it's completely, completely shifted my life. Yeah. yeah. So that's another thing I wanted to talk to you about. And it's funny watching you. I mean, it just, you light up talking <laughs> about this, which is like, oh, it's so beautiful. But what a lot of people may not know, I mean, you did mention being um, an educator for several years, over 16 years. And I think it was around the time that we met and maybe because of, you know, COVID was going on and these things, but you were feeling drawn to giving more time, more attention to your practice of Reiki and going down, um, you know, following the inspirations that you were feeling guided to follow. And I remember it was like, I blinked and then you were doing it. And I was like, <laughs> What? Usually people have such a tug of war and like, I don't know, is this going to pan out? What is going to happen? Right. So I wanted to talk to you a bit about like following those inspirations mm -hmm. and what that looked like for you. Cause you ended up studying massage and, you know, yes. there are other elements that came into play. Yeah. I, um, after Reiki training, I, so the space, so now this space that you see behind me is my office space, but the owner of the yoga studio and the woman who trained me in yoga, there was a room that she had available and, you know, was available for me to rent to start taking clients. So I would start taking clients after work on the weekends. And, you know, they even sent clients over to me. Uh, and so I just was like, I, I got to do this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at first when I started practicing, I was like, am I doing this right? Is this, but every time the clients would be like, wow, this, you know, they would tell me about their experience and I just wanted to do more and more of it. And yeah, so it's led me down this path of, so after doing Reiki for a while, then it led me to, you know, my, I do place palms on people. And so there was something about it that made me want to learn more about the body, like mm. the anatomy, even though I'd learned that in yoga teacher training, yeah. I wanted to learn more because I wanted to just learn like, how do people's bodies work? And so Reiki illuminated the whole massage thing. So I went to massage <laughs> school and now do Reiki infused massages. That was just, I just always get these downloads and it was like, you need to do Reiki infused massages. So that's a service now that I offer people, which is probably my most popular service, by the way, but it was just like, I wanted Reiki to be a part of everything that I did. Yeah. It's yeah. funny you say this. Um, that is really a thing in case anyone listening has never had it. One time I went to a place that I would go to often for a massage um, this was only like a year ago and this woman was doing massage on me, but I could 
feel like the energy moving in my body. And so mid massage, I look up at her and I'm like, are you doing Reiki? And she was like, how did you know? <laughs> she, yeah. And she's like, you know, it's usually an add on, you know, that people can yeah. do. And she's like, but whatever. She just allowed it to happen. And she was like, how do you know? And I was like, oh, I'm a practitioner too. And I could, I could just tell, but yeah. it was beautiful. It's a lovely experience um, for anyone that hasn't had it, but yeah. I love that you like went through this transitional phase where you made room to fit what you wanted to do into your life and didn't wait for like a perfect picture or a perfect time. And I say that because a lot of practitioners think like I have to completely abandon my job, my this, my this, and go a hundred percent over on the other side of the fence. Yeah. But you actually went through a transitional period, which I always recommend to people, like build yeah. your clientele first, like yes. <laughs> yes. see how it fits in. <laughs> yeah. But I love that you also mentioned having the nervousness, but the client feedback is what supported you. So could you talk a little bit about that? The beauty of practicing, even when you may have a little bit of fear, doubt, or worry, but then the getting that opportunity to hear the experience that clients have, how that can support you. Yeah. Um, I had, it was hard, you know, because yeah. you want to just dive right in, but right. I knew that I had to take baby steps. So just taking clients here and there really helped me to get more comfortable with, with my gift in this path of Reiki. And so in just working with clients, like I know, like I would just spend all day Saturday and would have, you know, at first it was challenging having multiple clients because I felt very drained. Yeah. But then eventually I realized I was doing too much of the work. I wasn't letting Reiki just do your do its thing. Mm -hmm. And so once I let go and let go of my ego in those sessions, it was like I would leave at the end of the day and be super energized, like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know. Um, and that is still now, even to this day, I feel super energized, but mm -hmm. I had to pace myself. And then eventually when I said, okay, this, this is what I want to do. This is going to be my thing. And I really just looked at how can I make this happen? So looking at financially, what to, how many clients did I need per day? What did I need to do? Where did, where were most of my clients coming from? And mm -hmm. my area, most of it was people just searching up Reiki, even just the key word Reiki. They're like, oh, she pops up. And um, yeah, so that's, I just knew that I, I told you before we started, you know, I'm in Aries rising and that put, I'm very action oriented. So, and I've been like this as a child. So if I say I'm going to do something and I see it in my mind, I just, I'm like, I got to do it. And you know, what's so funny <laughs> about that. My love is because you're also a cancer son, right? Yes. And I always tell people don't sleep on the cancers. Okay. Don't think like, oh, just because they're ruled by the moon and motherly and do do do. I was like, they're some of the most ambitious people you will ever meet. Yes. Don't, don't sleep on them. Okay. Very <laughs> but I imagine true. that Aries rising has to <laughs> give you like, but it is, I, I, you tell me an idea and then I blink and then, then she's off and running. Speaking yeah. of which. Not only have you started teaching Reiki and we'll talk about the area you teach it in and how people can connect with you, but there's two pieces to this I want to talk about. You really have focused a lot of your practice on um, working with women of color, making sure that there's um, available resources and options for healing within our community. I want to talk to you about uh, why this mattered so much to you, but also that you offer retreats. So it's not just that you're doing, you know, standard sessions and classes, but you're also creating these like wellness experiences for yes. people. So could you tell us first on the, about the POC side, and then we'll get to the retreats. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a good one. That one is like so dear to my heart because I, so I live in South Carolina and, you know, South Carolina, like many places, uh, have its share of challenges, especially when we look at things racially. And, right. um, so 
women of color were just just naturally drawn to me. And I noticed a lot of my clientele uh, were women of color. And just in our sessions, things would come up. And I was like, man, I can so relate. And, um, you know, I just noticed there were these patterns that were coming up, patterns that may have been connected to things that happened in childhood or things of um, these expectations that people have placed on us or how we're supposed to be. And it's like this, uh, I felt like this bur or something, people were just carrying this weight on, on their shoulders. And I was like, gosh, what can I, and I just noticed during the Reiki treatments, how at the end, there was this sense of release. There was this sense of, I don't have to do all the things. I don't have to be who society or anybody else tells me to be. I can be my authentic self. And this is when I was just like, wow, I I connect with this so much. And women would come and reach out to me and be like, how can I learn Reiki? Or I think just the things I was doing were inspiring. And I was like, how can I... Like she looks like she is enjoying what she does. <laughs> and I'm like, I do. I love what I'm doing. And I think that was just me living my truth and living, um, you know, just releasing the expectations that people put upon me yeah. and then actually walking and being this healer that, that I am, like the things that I do in my life and um. I just want, well, and it's not even at this point, not even trying anymore. I feel like there was a point in my life where I would, you know, everything had to just align because I was trying, but now it's not, I'm like divinely led to do things. And even here, I call forth my divine right clients. And I've told people, I'm like, everybody that has walked through this door was supposed to be here. Yeah. Every single person that I've seen, whether it's Reiki or massage, but it's also, you know, my connection to spirit, God, higher source, however you look at it. Like, I'm just always calling forth like divine right guidance, you yes. know? Yeah. Uh, that's a really good point. Um, I think as a reminder for people that you can, you know, because sometimes we hear people say this, like, oh, I'm divinely guided. And people are like, well, <laughs> remember on... <laughs> Charlie Brown's Halloween and one of them, it might've been Charlie Brown, but one of them was like, I got a rock. Like every <laughs> door they went to, everyone else got candy. And the one character always got a rock. <laughs> yeah. I think like people feel sometimes when you say like, you know, like, oh, I'm guided and like this intuitive inspiration, but it's like, but you can ask, you yes. can ask. Yes. And I want to talk to you a bit about the intuitive side in a second, but one of the things I love that you're pointing out is that Reiki is so much more than just, you know, the sessions and laying of hands. I think a lot of people that come into this work find a different relationship with the idea of community. Mm, yeah. So it seems like something about Reiki really helps people to cultivate or find community for themselves. And that's like really an incredible thing. And so I can imagine with you holding these healing spaces and people having the the space to be seen and heard and, you know, um, even just that communal connection yes. that has to be so powerfully healing in of itself. Yes. Oh my gosh, it is. And, you know, whenever there's an event or we get together, people are like, okay, when are we going to do this again? Yeah. It's so different. Like, you know, here it's, um, and, and a lot of people have, there's this sh struggle between who you are as the spirit being, but then also the religious part. Oh, yes. And, you know, so here, um, where I am, religion is, is big. Um, right. and so one of the things that, you know, especially women of color we talk about is yes, you can still, this is not abandoning your faith. Like you can still be all the things right. and, um, but you can also recognize that I am this spiritual being having this human experience and who I am as a spirit and nurture my spirit. Yeah. And I think there is just such this freedom in that there is this, ah, oh, I can just be me, but then also in the spaces where, um, cause last month I did an event called sacred stillness and it was, um, 
just women of color and we did some yoga practices and meditation and stuff. But even at that event, the women were like, oh, I feel like I could just be myself. I, feel like I don't have to put on a mask or a yeah. face. And it was just like, I can just relax, you know? And so I really, I, I never planned to do stuff like that. I, you know, I've even had my own share of challenges about um, just appreciating who I am as a black woman. I was raised in Charleston, South Carolina, and just appreciating myself. And I remember there was a time growing up where it was like, well, is this enough or or I, I want to be something else. And then now it's at this point in my life where, gosh, I love who I am. I <laughs> love, it's like made me want to learn more about who I am and my culture and my ancestors. And um, and I think that's why I'm going down this path of, well, in women of color being drawn to me at this time. Yeah. And as I mentioned, you are going to, you talk a lot about ancestral connection and healing in the uh, Reiki summit conversation that we have. But now that you mentioned this, I mean, I have to ask you this too, how important that part has been in your own healing. And, you know, because one thing you do notice in this realm of spirituality, whether it's Reiki or it could be anything, It seems to activate in people a lot of either awareness or attraction or curiosity about their lineage. And, you know, even in this realm, um, people wanting to reconnect to the healing practices a lot of times of whatever their ancestors were connected to. There's just so many layers and it's interesting how that in particular illuminates for a lot of people. So could you talk about how that started to activate for you? Oh man, it <laughs> activated big time. I was like, what <laughs> is going on? You know, um, like I shared, I grew up in Charleston, South Carolina, which was a major hub for slavery. You know, right. slaves were brought through there. And I always felt this heaviness and this weight when I when I was in Charleston, even growing up and going back there. But here in my Reiki space, and I just know it's been through um, my meditation practices and different spaces that I've been in, is that I will now get these messages from my ancestors and particularly my grandmothers, um, my mother and my father, but mostly my maternal grandmother, my mom's mom. I just received all of these messages from her and I connected with her in a way that I didn't before Reiki. It was like something just unlocked in me to where she felt safe to be like, Hey, I need to share this this with you. And there have been times um, that I felt an army of ancestors around me, just like telling me go forth. Um, My great grandmother was a midwife in Charleston. And so she, she was a healer and she, my grandfather was a farmer. Uh, I had an aunt who owned a health food store. So I come from this family of people who are very much into to natural everything. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what, what is this? And what I felt, especially the loves, loved ones that have transitioned is you're doing what we weren't able to do or doing yeah. what we didn't feel safe enough to do, or we were afraid that, you know, it wasn't going to support um, us financially mm-hmm. and, Um, so I always just feel like them pushing me and ushering me and saying, do this, do it. And it's just an amazing feeling. Yeah. Yeah. It is incredible that you say, um, and I think I shared this with you before, but it's surprising a lot of times for people who may show up within their lineage, because oftentimes it's people we didn't even know, like, um, two that came in very clearly for me, I was extremely close to my grandmother she rarely is in my space. I'm like, I don't know who she's visiting, but it's not me. <laughs> However, um, when I first, you know, in the beginning of practicing Reiki, there were a lot of interesting healing experiences, I'll say, that I was having that were unexpected. And one of them was, um, I literally saw this vision of my grandmother's grandmother, who I know was a slave and she was a freed slave at some point. But I mean, my family's old. My my grandmother was born in 1906. So her grandmother, you know, yeah. and 
Um, and they were also from the Carolinas, by the way. Um, but I saw a vision clear as day of my grandmother's grandmother. And I saw some things that were happening to her. And it was an odd thing. But the best way I could describe it is it felt like some kind of witnessing of her. It was allowing these certain energies to move through my body. Mm -hmm. And as these energies were moving through my body, the it was like a roll call of my aunts. My mom is the youngest of eight. It was like I heard all of their names like, like it felt literally like there was healing being done from things that were passed on from her and her experience. Do you know what I mean? And it was the wildest thing. And I was like, what on earth? Um, that was crazy. And then one time I had a medium do a reading for me and she was describing someone related to me. And I was like, I have no idea who you're talking about lady. And then many years later, I saw a picture of my father's father and it was the exact person this medium had described. I'd never met him, didn't know him, um, but she described even down to his outfit and it matched what I saw in the picture, you know? So I just say that to say, we never know who's looking for us. Never, right. <laughs> and when we say <laughs> our ancestors, like, you know, it's it's wild how far back it can go. Exactly. And yes. like, we just don't know. So I wanted to ask you from this experience as well. Do you ever feel inspired by or encouraged by? Does it feel like something from them has passed on to you or that has activated within you? Yeah. 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 Um, I know that it's been just this, this healing. Um, and I know that that's what drew me to massage. Um, and then also when I did just looking into my ancestry and, um, just my entire makeup, a lot of it is West African, um, like Nigeria, Cameroon, that entire area. And then once I learned that, I just started seeing visions of, you know, the people that were there and my ancestors that were there. And, but I also have had moments where I could feel the traumas. I could feel yeah. the things that the traumas that had been, have been transferred through um, my lineage, even through my grandmother, there's a healing that I was able to do for my grandmother that a release that she needed. And someone um, had done a reading for me and they told me, they said, your grandmother is very attached to you because you, she, you're going to be the person that helps her to heal. Wow. And, um, but yeah, so it's unleashed this, um, like I've always felt like I've been a compassionate person, yeah. but it's unleashed this level of compassion for people, not just in who they are in this physical sense, but wanting to see everybody, um, free in terms of the spiritual sense. It's yes. wanting me to help. Like, I just have this deep desire to help set everybody free of what, <laughs> um, of what they may feel like is stopping them from from moving forward or just their their ancestral lineage isn't it wild how there does come this point it seems like a lot of people have the experience of just having this knowing of mm, not what you're supposed to be but you really feel a deep call to do you really feel deeply called and it's it's this undescribable feeling and it's like you can't ignore it and it doesn't even matter to you if it makes sense to anyone else. It's just this deep, deep knowing that comes online. That's wild. But I wanted to ask you about the intuitive part because as you mentioned, you are very intuitive. Um, I can validate that. But, <laughs> but I wanted to ask you about this as it relates to sessions and holding space because some people shy away from their intuitive gifts because they're afraid of what they may see or feel or sense. And yeah, you may sense someone's hurt. You may sense someone's pain, but you'll also get to see the beauty of what they are beneath all the stories, right? Could you yeah. talk a little bit about what it has been like, even adapting to what it is you're able to feel or perceive when in connection with people now? And do you have conversation around that? Oh my gosh. Um. Yes, I... So at first, um, 
I was a little nervous to share with people what was coming up for me. And then I just, I got into this space. I had studied like trauma informed yoga and just like knowing that people have experienced different traumas. And so I would always, of course, ask now ask for permission to share with them. You know, I received this and I'd love to share it with you or ask you about it. And once I did that, it was just like, you know, I would share with people what came up and they're like, oh my gosh, that is so, this is, or even a loved one that shared something with me, I would, I would just tell them they're like, oh my gosh. And I was like, wow, this is what is going on. But I do remember, and it could have been, I don't know what was, may have been going on with me that day, but I had received a message and I was like, I'm not sharing, I'm not sharing this. And the, yeah, I said, well, if this is true, then she'll say it. And when the client was talking, cause I had gotten a message about a, a particular person's name. Okay. And I was like, I'm not saying that I could be so wrong. I'm so off. And we started, we were in conversation. I was like, by the way, what is your friend's name? And she told me, and it was the exact name. And I was like, see, that's why I got to always trust myself. But that right. was, it was an off day. And I was like, nah, I'm not saying it, but it, it, you got to just trust your gut and yeah. just go with it. Because I know that there, like I said earlier in our conversation is that even as a child, I had these gifts and I would always get visions through like dreams. My dream world is like, woo, there is a lot of stuff that goes on. Um, when I'm in that Reiki room, stuff happens or when I'm doing like a reading with someone. And now I just know, just trust it, Malaya. You have, you've been given this gift. You got to just go with it. Yeah. So, And that's a very interesting thing because I think that's the, the part that a lot of people get nervous about is like, am I wrong? And when you let that go and even be okay with the potential, maybe you are, you know, you just, yeah. I think it helps you to gain a lot of trust in your um, intuitive connection. So speaking of, I want to talk to you about, you know, using Oracle and how it can help to clarify what it is you're translating. And the reason is because I know that you will be teaching an Oracle class yes. where you live, go see <laughs> Malaya, go take the class. Um, but I wanted to talk to you about that, like uh, working with cards. And I know there's all kinds of cards, you know, we're all drawn to. We all have more decks than we probably should, right? But can you talk a little bit about how you personally um, connect with cards and how they do help you maybe translate the language of your intuition? And do yeah. they help? Uh, the client to understand what's coming up or do they ever say like, Oh, that picture, this reminds me of something too. <laughs> oh my. Well, so I had never, you know, people would talk about tarot. They would talk about Oracle and knew nothing about it. And then when I listened to your podcast and you were talking about your Oracle training, I was like, well, I need to learn this. I want to, I want to take this class, but being in that course and, and connecting with the cards um, because now I'm like, wow, these, they're, the cards are like my baby and yeah. I will pull cards before a client gets there. I want to connect with their energy and the card will tell me like exactly what may be coming up for the client. Uh, I use them at the end of some treatments just to see like, what is, what is the final message for this client today? Yeah. Like what, and whenever I share with them, well, first of all, the cards are beautiful. So whenever I show somebody the card, they're like, well, first of all, they say, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. <laughs> and, then, and then we talk about the message behind it. Um, because one of the things that I love that you did with your cards is like, it talks about like the shadow side of this, the light side of this. So we talk about that. We talk about what is the message? Where does this resonate with them? So the card, I mean, I pull them for myself all the time. Um, but I think for me, the cards have just, you know, I meditate with them. I, they're, it was just so interconnected yeah. in a way that I, I did not expect. I was just like, okay, I'm just going to learn how to shuffle some cards, but <laughs> it really helped me. And there's so many like grounding practices and meditations that in the training that you gave us 
um, that I do even to this day with before I do a Reiki treatment to clear my energetic space right. to connect with to connect with the client and different meditations me and the client will do together. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. And you are a beautiful reader. And it's a funny thing because a lot of people again, I I loved cards initially because of that. Like they helped me get out of my way. And when I would doubt something, even now, still, you know, I do readings on the app and I will be shuffling the cards and I might be telling a story or saying something that's coming through intuitively. And then the cards fall out and they're exactly the mirror of what I just said. And I'm like, you can't make this stuff up. Like you just, you cannot. Um, But they're also, you know, it's fun working with clients because they also get to, some clients will pick up on the imagery or resonate and I feel like it draws them in to their healing experience in a beautiful way so I know I don't have you forever I have got to ask you (laughs) about these beautiful retreats that you have been curating and I know you have one coming up in Puerto Rico so could you tell us first of all why you wanted to host retreats like what you were hoping these spaces would be and what do you have upcoming so of course, um, you know, this Reiki training led me down the path of sound healing to all this other stuff. And then the idea of travel, like I, I enjoy travel and it's something that I feel like I don't do enough. I was like, I want to go somewhere. Well, Hey, why wouldn't it, it would be nice to go somewhere and bring other people with me and to do healing. And so last year I actually like went to like a two day course on how to do retreats, which helped me to kind of figure out what is this going to look like to plan out, just map out everything before I put it out there. Right. And so once all of that was set, I think it was January. I, you know, I came up with this flyer, shared it. And within a month it was sold out, but I only wanted it to be for like eight women, this beautiful boutique hotel in Puerto Rico. And I had, had, I, you know, I'm going to do like meditation with them. It's called peaceful pause retreat because what I noticed, and it's just, and it's for women of color. Mm -hmm. And because what I noticed was that women of color, there is this constant, uh, and not all the time, but there's this, okay, I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to take care of family. I got to, you know, um, in which all women have those challenges, but I think I wanted to really focus on women of color because that's who was drawn to coming into my space. And yeah, so I, I planned it. I just let Reiki spirit. I said, okay, all right. I put it all together. Do your thing. And it, it got sold out. And then I had the opportunity recently to go there and visit the hotel. And just, I literally, from the time I was like, I want to go through this journey of what this trip will look like so that yeah. I can curate the most, the best experience for these women. So that's what I did from the time going to the airport to being there. It was like, in my mind, I could just see this is, this is how, this is the space. And I didn't realize it was so close to the ocean. And now I'm like, we're going to do an ocean meditation <laughs> and ocean side meditation. But yeah, so it's something I plan to definitely continue to do Yeah, um, because I think it's just good to just get, I do these. So there's this place up in Boone, North Carolina that um, years ago I started going to for my birthday once a year. I've even done silent retreat, meditation retreat. So I've experienced like the whole retreat stuff. Yeah. And I was like, man, this, this would be so nice to actually facilitate one. So I'm super excited in the women. Well, I love, I mean, listening to you, I was like, listen to this one's creative process. (laughs) Like I went there and I envisioned her song and I felt it. I'm like, no wonder I blink my eye and there you go. Right. No, it's beautiful. But I want to talk about the name of your business because I think that's significant. But also when you were saying, um, focusing on women of color, what popped to mind is a lot of the invisible stressors that we have Mm -hmm. um, that aren't necessarily like obviously linked to our to-do list or, you know, just not obvious. Um, And I say that because it, I've always, so, you know, I was born in DC. I'm originally from DC, 
primarily black. It used to be, but whatever, still <laughs> it <Yeah>. is. <laughs> and, um, but I grew up in Boston and now I live in Southern California, which are not predominantly black areas. And um, there's diversity in both, but, you know, and so anyway, I remember growing up every time I would go home DC for the summer, I would get off the plane and there would be like this sigh of relief of like, I wasn't the only person of color anywhere I went. Mm -hmm. Whereas in my day-to-day -day life, it's very common that I may be the only black person at the grocery store, at healing circles, in classes, and at, anywhere at any given time. And it, it just gives you this, you know, like even this unconscious and conscious awareness where if you hold this tension and you're hyper aware of your surroundings, all the things, right? And so every time I go home, I was like, huh, <laughs> like, huh, I could just breathe. Well, then um, at the start of, you know, the pandemic when everything was going on and like we had just an eruption of everything. And mm -hmm. I, I went back to the East Coast because of uh, funerals. But even though that was, you know, weighted, I noticed that I felt a sense of relief again, like in a very deep, deep way being around my family again, not only not being the only person of color, like that was not the time you wanted to be at anyway. You know what I mean? Like really, truly though. Right. So when you say that, it reminds me of like um, the, I think of them as like invisible pressures and tensions that we carry that unless you experience it, I mean, why would you know that exactly that's going on for anyone yeah so yeah. I, I think that's beautiful but that brings me to also the name of your business peaceful pause healing yeah just that the peaceful pause I'm like ah oh, that makes me want to <laughs> <laughs> could you talk a little bit about like how you even came up with this beautiful name but what that even means and what it feels like to you Malaya because it makes me want to just ah <laughs> Well, that's the thing. I, well, you asking me that now, I'm like, how did I come up with the name? So I know it wasn't me. I, I mean, definitely <laughs> downloaded for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so peaceful pause was because I like taking moments of pause. Like yeah. I, should, I love going to this place in Boone, North Carolina to pause just to get away. And that's what I wanted my business to be a place where people could just feel like they could pause Mm -hmm. a place for me I I um, feel like I very much represent peace like I yeah. love things to be peaceful and calm and <laughs> it always work out that way but that's how I like things to be and so I was like okay I am peace I want to create a space for people to pause but it's also this space for healing and yeah. so that's what happens when people walk into this space and you know clients will say wow this one client she told me she was like um what did she say? She was like, don't tell people this is a Reiki treatment or a massage session. This is an experience. She was like, <laughs> this is a whole experience. Yeah. And it's because every client is just nurtured and just, you know, there's this connection here. And even in the other rooms, like now I have a Reiki room and a massage room, but everything in there has been purposefully put there yeah. to to create this space where people can pause, where they forget about everything else. And that's what a lot of clients say. They're like, where am I now? How do I go back to regular life? And, but that's, that's what I wanted. That's what I want for myself. I'm always yeah. looking at it as even the, the creating the retreat is what would I want for myself? This is what I want to give to other people. Yeah. No, that is really a beautiful thing. And it's interesting. It makes me curious about, because on the, the clientele side, I can completely understand like your draw and how beautifully you hold space and why you would feel called to create the spaces that you create, but yeah. you also teach. So just for anyone curious, if you're in the area as well, I think you teach some things online as well, though. Um, you can learn Reiki with Malaya. So I wanted to talk to you about that. What was the inspiration to start sharing in that way to teach? And what do you hope that your students get from what it is you are passing down the line? 
<laughs> through the lineage. I know that like, you know, in yoga, we call it like our dharma, our uh, our soul purpose. I'm a teacher. That's just, you know, I spent so many years teaching. I can't run from it. And yeah. I'm like, just stop trying to run. You don't have to teach <laughs> like in a public school setting, but you're, I'm a teacher. And so I knew that when I learned Reiki and I knew over time, um, understanding it for myself, I just naturally started would just talk to people about it. And so the same woman that did my level one and two, I, I actually went through Reiki three twice. <laughs> yeah. I went through her. And, but then I also went through Mama Ifatayo down yes. in Pittsburgh because I wanted to experience her. Like I told the woman here and her name is Jose Madison, who was amazing. Um, but I told Jose, I said, I'm going to do your training, but I also need Mama Ifatayo. You know, yes. she is. Can we just, can we just give her a <laughs> shout out for a moment? Cause I mean, <laughs> listen, she knows we both love her. Okay. So just, yes. Sending love so, to you. Yes. Oh my gosh. And I go down there so often just to be in her presence. Yeah. And she has just such wisdom in this, this way with Reiki that makes you, she gives me the side of it. That's just, 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 just do your thing. Just relax, just be you. And that's, so then after experiencing both of those trainings, I was like, yeah, I'm going to teach it. And so, <laughs> yeah. And I, I love that. And I love seeing people go through their own journey through being attuned to Reiki. And yeah. yeah. I love that. And it's funny. I love how you started with, listen, I can't run from what I am. I am a teacher. Okay. <laughs> That's it. That's my dharma. That's who I am. I am a teacher. Period. Uh, no, it's, that's a beautiful thing. And I always tell people, like some people who do really feel called to share, but they're nervous of like, do I know enough? Do I have this enough? Do I? Blah, blah. I'm like, listen, all we can do is practice. Yes. You learn a lot through sharing with other people. But how fortunate we are that there are so many people who feel inspired to share because that's how Reiki has spread like wildfire. Gosh, because yes. people have chosen to say yes when they feel that inspiration i just have to say this for a second mama <laughs> uh well you said her anyone that knows her like she something about her is just like this archetype of like the great mother yes. and when you said it i had this image in my head i don't know if you're familiar with his work but he's a um a black artist american artist his name is charles B charles bibbs hmm. He's really well known. Um, you see his stuff in like black movies and TV shows all the time, hanging on the wall. But he's out here. I think he's originally from New Orleans, if I'm not mistaken, but he's in California now. Anyway, um, I'll send you the link after this. Okay. But yeah. <laughs> he has a, a series of artwork that really highlight kind of that archetypal mother energy, the nurturer, the healer, like these kinds of things. And when you said that, I saw a flash of his work and thinking of her. That's who she is. You got to look at the work. Yes. Now. Yes. And she yeah. creates space for yeah. healers. She always has these events where you can go down there and just connect with other healers. Yes. And she pours into you. And I, I need that. And I love that. Yeah. And so that's, I think, um, has inspired me to do the same. Yes. And I tell women here, you know, I mean, where I live is, is definitely not San Diego. It's a, <laughs> you know, it's growing, yeah. but I'm like, there is no competition in divine mind. No. You know, I want everybody to learn Reiki, start your business yeah. and to, because that's that I feel like for me, training other people, also helping them to launch their Reiki business, yeah. I will also be blessed. I feel like, yes. yeah, but Mama Ifatayo really has inspired me and Jose has as well. They both yeah. just, I've, I've been blessed with some women in my space that, that just continue to push me forward. Okay, you know what, Malaya, enough of that. Let me tell you why. Because every time she sends me the email talking about what's going down at Nessa's home, 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 okay? I feel some kind of way because I'm like, I can't go. Just go. Although I keep telling her I am going to go there one day. I am going to make it. Every time I see I'm like, oh, I, oh. I wish I was there. Um. Anyway, I can't tell you how 
amazing it has been really truly amazing watching your journey and again just I love watching the way you follow your inspirations and I can't even say you sit on anything it's like it's again I'm not even exaggerating <laughs> anytime you're like I've got an inspiration like blank and then she's off and running and she's doing it right so mm -hmm. it has been very inspiring watching you um I'm very like motivated and inspired even by your post. They, oh, you are another one. Honey, when I look at your post, I'm like, I want to go get on her table. <laughs> Come on. I want to go there. Yeah. <laughs> so I just want to say for everyone, again, you can go to Malaya's website and see how you can connect with her even remotely. Um, but you do have in-person training events. You also have retreats and knowing her, there might be five other things by the time this airs. Okay. So yes, it, yes. And she does have an upcoming um, Oracle class that she will be teaching in person. So really, if you're in her area, go because she is a teacher. I am <laughs> That's a teacher. the truth. Yes. Teacher, yes. <laughs> go learn. Um, I just wanted to make sure everyone knows your website is peaceful pause healing dot com. They can also follow you on Instagram under peaceful pause healing. Um, but I wanted to ask you specifically, what can we look out for and what can people do with you remotely if they can't get to the Carolinas? Um, well, they can. I also do distance. So distance Reiki. Um, I also have like I've created a MalayaRoper.com website um, so that if people want to work directly with me, because the Peaceful Pause site will be more for like um you know, Reiki sessions, massage. But if you want to work with me in terms of coming to a training, then um, go to my website to look for those types of things. And yeah, like you said, I, whatever is download, whatever comes to me, even when I was in Puerto Rico and I was just getting all these, it was just creative. The creativity was just flowing. And I was like, write it down, write it down, write it down. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm excited. So lots ahead. Yes. Facing myself. But well, lots listen, lots ahead. <laughs> but also I'm going to put out there that you and I are going to meet up in person somehow, yes. some way, whether you come to San Diego or I go over there, maybe we'll meet at Nessa's home. <laughs> well, that would be great. I would love that. Yeah, honey, I would love that too. Um, so I'm going to put both websites down in the show description, if that's okay. And it was an honor. I was excited to interview <laughs> you for the summit, but I have to say, I'm so thankful that I got to speak to you again Thank here you. on the podcast. And I'm, I'm very, very thankful, my love. And it's, it's incredible just watching you soar. I mean, go be inspired. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you, Yolanda. And you have been like, when I think about my teachers along the way, you, you've been one of my teachers. So I am, this is a true honor. And I'm so grateful for all that you're doing in this space. Thank you, babe. And <laughs> let's just keep bouncing it, right? Everyone, yeah. I hope you're listening going, oh, this is my <laughs> <laughs> let's just keep pushing it forward. And exactly. we thank you all for joining us today. We will see you all soon. Bye for now. Okay, beautiful alchemist. First of all, I want to thank Malaya again for taking time to share her story with us. Hopefully you were inspired and learned and were able to relate to some of her journey. And if you want to learn more about Malaya and her work, be sure to visit her website, peacefulpausehealing.com or follow her on Instagram at peacefulpausehealing. Also, if you want to join me for Reiki chats on Tuesdays, be sure to download the Energetic Alchemist app so you can access the Zoom link. And I can't wait to meet you and chat with you about Reiki and whatever it is that you're practicing. If you want to join me for classes, be sure to go to my website, theenergeticalchemist.com and register for your class today. So that is all my loves. Thank you for being here on Reiki Radio. I will see you next time. Remember to always journey in love.